The last uh, core topic from uh, physics standard level is topic eight, which is energy, power, and climate change. So I'm going to be going over what I think are the, the key things from this topic as well. Um, obviously not everything, we can't do everything, I think I've mentioned that a few times, but uh, at least a few of the things that I think uh, they show up on exams very often and things that are also just important to know. So Sankey diagrams are uh, one thing. Uh, first of all, these are going to be diagrams with arrows. And I just want to explain here that the width of the arrows, so the width of, whoops, of the arrows represents either the power or the energy. So I'll give you an example, maybe that'll help. Um, so let's say we have some sort of power generator or some sort of thing like that. So we actually, we start off with something like this and I'd like it to be, let's say three units tall here like this. So this right here, that right there is going to be the uh, energy that comes into this. Okay, so energy in. So there's going to be some sort of input energy. Now of course what happens in any real process when you're trying to have power generation is that you have losses. Things aren't 100% efficient. So what's going to happen then is that you're going to lose some power. Right? You're going to lose some energy. So this could be lost in a number of ways. This could be, so I'll say losses due to, I don't know, heat, maybe friction, etc. So you could have that. But then of course maybe then in the end you actually have some energy you actually use. So maybe that's this right here. So I'll just draw a little arrow like this. So this right here could be the um, like the useful energy that comes out. Okay so useful energy out. And if that's the case then we can actually write an equation for how efficient things are. And it goes like this. Efficiency equals, and uh, we could say it's the, it's basically what you put in divided by what you get out. Okay, so in other words, it's the useful, uh, sorry, it's the other way around, useful work that you get out, and you divide that by um, the work that you put in. When I say work, I just mean energy. So sorry, so it's actually going to be, yeah, it's what you get out divided by what you put in, right? If it was the other way around, you'd have an efficiency of, you know, lots of percent, way more than 100. So what you do is you take a look for efficiency. What you do is you take a look at this thickness of this right here, for example, represents how much energy comes in. So that's the work done going in. And then you have losses, of course, you lose some stuff, and in the end, uh, you end up with useful energy out. Remember, work and energy are synonymous. So in this case, then, useful energy out, that's a useful work out. I don't mean work out, I mean useful work that you get out of it, divided by the you know, stuff you put into it. So in the case of this one right here, then, uh, if I want to actually figure out the efficiency of what I just drew, let's say this right here is uh, three units tall. And let's say this one right here is only one unit tall. I don't know if you can see, but I've actually drawn it with these little dots that are on the board. I've actually made this three dots thick, and this is only one dot thick. So that means in this case then, it would be one over three, which in this case would be roughly equal to 33% efficient. Okay, so that could be some sort of power generator or some sort of physical process. Things can never be 100% efficient. There's always losses. There's losses due to, like I said, heat, friction, all sorts of other things. Uh, sound is actually a form of energy, so that can actually make lots of noise and you lose energy that way. You could have air resistance, uh, which is a form of friction. So that's how Sankey diagrams work. Now energy density is also something that's, uh, that's often talked about. And here, uh, in order to do that, well, maybe we can just write a definition too. So energy density. Now this is going to be important because we're going to look at fuels and things like this. So um, this is going to be, let's say this will be the energy released
or the energy that you can get out of this thing, uh, divided by, in this case, the mass of the fuel used. So then you, this sort of tells you then, this is a way to compare different forms of energy. Uh, it's a way, it's not the only way, but at least this is something really important here. So energy density, it's energy release divided by the mass of the fuel that's used. So you can compare different types of fuel. So for example, you can compare uh, coal as a form of energy. So you can look at how much energy do you get out per kilogram of coal. Or you could do the same thing with, um, yeah, diesel fuel. Or you could do the same thing with, let's say, a nuclear power plant. So when you look at energy density, um, there's, there's a number of reasons why, for example, cars, why we still use, um, you know, oil. And it's really nasty that we use it because, of course, it's a non-renewable resource. Right? It means that we're using it up much more than, uh, than is actually being made. Because, uh, you know, um, the oil that we get is basically uh, based on, you know, crushed up dinosaurs and uh, other, you know, vertebrates or plants and things like that. So, of course, they go in the earth, you know, they get layered and layered uh, with lots of other stuff on top. They get squished and it ends up making oil for us. Uh, so we're using it up much faster than it's actually made. So that means that this is a resource that's... I suppose, I mean, it is renewable in the strictest sense. You can always make more. It just takes millions and millions of years to make a bit. And we're using up tons of it, ridiculous amounts. But the reason why we still use it then is because uh, uh, oil actually has a fairly high energy density, which means you get quite a bit of bang for the buck, kind of. Now, of course, there are things that are better than that. Um, for example, you could use nuclear power. Uh, that's much more efficient. It has a much higher energy density. But then nuclear power comes with its own associated things like possible dangers in case there's a core reactor meltdown or like what happened in Japan, uh, or at least a big scare of that when they had their uh, big tsunami um, just recently. So these things can actually be very much uh, a concern. So you might think, well, then, of course, uh, let's use electricity or let's use um, solar power. Those are great ideas, but the problem is you don't get much energy density. Uh, now there it's a little bit more difficult to talk about energy density for solar power because you're not really using mass of fuel used. But again, uh, solar power isn't terribly efficient. So it's great because it's sort of a free energy source. You just you know, point up at the sky and as long as it's sunny, which is a big thing. Uh, that's why I wouldn't want to build a solar uh, power station here in Denmark because it's often cloudy in the winter. Um, but if you're somewhere really sunny, for example, it's just it's a free energy source, which is great because it sort of never turns off uh, Well, the Sun will eventually turn off in billions and billions of years, but we don't care uh, Effectively speaking for us. It's basically free energy But of course, it's not very efficient and so that's why we still unfortunately use things like uh, Yeah, are still our cars often run on liquid fuel It's actually because the energy density is actually quite high comparatively So it's quite easy to make a car go with uh, You know using oil and you know and making obviously auto fuel out of that uh, Then it is uh, you know, it's comparatively easier to do that than let's say with electricity um, Although those are definitely improving but that's the idea behind energy density is you can compare different resources and you can compare if they're renewable or non-renewable, which means, you know, you can make more. And you can also compare if they're things that are, uh, you know, easy or, or hard to make or get. So there's lots of other energy sources and we're going to talk a little bit about those in the uh, equations section. So there you could have things like uh, wind energy. Denmark is very big on making these wind turbines. They're not actually wind mills because they're not crushing up stuff. It's actually a turbine. So they're using these big sort of you know, turbines that are turning in the wind and then those give you some electricity. You can also use things like we talked about solar power. You can use nuclear power. Um, there's things like um, even wave energy can be used. So there's a lot of different sources of energy.